It has been said that trust is the most expensive thing in the world. It can take years to earn and only seconds to lose. Cultures that value and instill trust tend to have people that take risks, innovate, and collaborate. If trust doesn't exist, you will see things like tense relationships and limited communication. As Gustavo Grodzinski mentions in his book, culture trumps everything. Trust and anxiety are inversely related, meaning where there is no trust, members of the team exude higher levels of stress and significant energy depletion throughout the day. On the other hand, with a culture of trust, team members will play a significant role in building confidence and energy in others, leading to greater motivation and successful outcomes. This same thought process and inverse relationship between trust and anxiety exists within families and friend groups. Fortunately, there is a formula that enables you to look at the variables that help build trust. It is called the Mishra model, and it is experience divided by risk. In blendification, we call it the trust model. From a mathematical perspective, to build trust, we must either increase experience or reduce risk. Looking at the denominator, risk, if I said I needed $10 for lunch and I would pay you back tomorrow, you would likely give me the $10 and trust that I would pay you back. Meaning you would have greater trust because there is limited risk. The risk is only $10, so I trust you. If, on the other hand, I said my car is broken and I asked you for $50,000 to buy a new car today and I would pay you back tomorrow, your trust would be much lower since the amount of risk is higher. So when we are in situations with people where there is a substantial risk, it is likely trust will be negatively impacted. Think of the risk related to a missing budget or goal that triggers a significant bonus. It is likely an employee would have less trust if 75% of their compensation was based on an ambiguous bonus target or a budget they can't influence. In this case, there is likely to be low trust and high anxiety. What about your personal life and relationships? On your personal whiteboard, if you highlighted a specific relationship that you wish to improve, apply the trust model to see how you can reduce risk. It may be your child experiences anxiety whenever you ask her questions. In this case, there may be a lack of trust that needs to be overcome with increased experience or time together. Looking at experience, the numerator, increasing experience will have a positive impact on building trust. Experience is made up of four specific behaviors, reliability, openness, competence, and concern. Wouldn't it be great if we could simply focus on one of these and let the other slip? Unfortunately, that's not the case. In order to build trust, it is important to enhance reliability, openness, competence, and concern together. Think about it. Have you ever really trusted somebody that was extremely reliable but was not competent? Or someone that was very nice and open but deep down inside you knew they weren't concerned about you? So as you use the trust model, it is important to focus on all four of these areas. When building trust, you must go first as a leader. Leaders are responsible for building trust and filling the energy tank. Howard Schultz of Starbucks took the company from six stores to 3,500 stores by creating a culture that brings people along using the currency of trust. Take a few minutes to look at this formula and spend some time thinking about ways in which you can improve your reliability, openness, competence, and concern with those around you. Over time, the trust you develop will be rewarded with greater confidence, less anxiety, and greater fulfillment. Apply this tool directly to the relationship block on your personal whiteboard to help you realize your relationship outcomes.